was from five years old till 15, was raised in a, in a nightclub, a bar, which was up front for the gambling casino in the back. So I saw a lot of things the time I was 14 years old that most young kids shouldn't see. My job, one of my chores, as they called them, was every Sunday morning, or every Saturday and Sunday, I had to get up and pick up all the empty beer boxes and stuff where they'd refill the coolers from behind the bar and all and take them out and burn them in the backyard. At that stage in my life, I was starting to go out with my friends, do different things and all, and, and the rule was you can leave when your chores are done. So I got up on a Saturday morning, went into the room where they stacked up the empty boxes. I took them out and I burned them. And then I'm uptown. And my sister chases me down and said, you need to get home. She said, I'm not gonna use his name, but our stepdad is mad. You're in trouble, get home now. So I walk home, I go in. He said, you didn't do your chores. And by that stage of my life, I was starting to be a little rebellious teenager. And I'd had enough. So over the years, there'd been some, some really rough, rough times with him. So he took me back in the room in the back, which was where the gambling casino was at. And there were some beer boxes there. Obviously, they had put some in after I cleaned up. And I said, those weren't there. He said, yeah, they were. And I said, no, sir, they were not. And he come across the room with his hand drew back and said, I'm going to open your eyes up. So I knew he was thinking to smack me. And I thought, I'm going to get one lick in. And I reared back and hit him right in the mouth. You got to understand, this man was big, strong. He hit me so hard, he knocked me against the wall. And I grabbed him and was hugging him so he couldn't, so he couldn't hit me again. And he bit me. So I turned him loose, gets me by the throat, slams me against the wall, and I was starting to kind of come and go. My feet were off the ground, dangling, and I remember looking out the corner of my eye and I saw my mother walk in the room, and she was just standing there. And I thought, she's gonna let him kill me. And I just relaxed, and I just said, I'm gone. I woke up laying on the floor, didn't see my mother till the next day. I didn't find out till later that she had actually pulled a pistol on him, and that's why he dropped me in the floor. I didn't know that. I thought my mother had, had just abandoned me at the moment. It turned out she didn't. That beating was the best thing ever happened to me because God started right then changing my life. Let me share this. We, that stage of my life, I, I was probably, I mean, I've lost track of the years, 16 maybe, going on 17. Had moved in with my grandmother who worked at nights. So I pretty much was on my own to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And uh, like every Friday night after a football game, we all went out and had a drinking spree. And I said, you know, I'm getting tired of this. I'm ready to go meet me a, a good girl. I mean a good girl. And settle down and, and, and stop this. Little did I know that that was a prayer. And I didn't know it was a prayer. God heard it. A few days later, he, he began to start start his work, changing my life. Um, I met Judy at school, and then uh, school had a had a hayride planned, and, and uh, I'd ask her to go. Like I told y'all earlier, if I'd been her dad, I wouldn't let her even talk to me. And I'm standing with a group of men, and I'm standing beside this man, didn't have a clue who he was. And we're talking, and a little bit he looks at his watch and says, uh, are you picking my daughter up? And I looked up, I said, oh my gosh. I said, are you Judy's dad? He said, yeah. And I was like, oh no. Hope I hadn't said anything I shouldn't say. Uh, that was the beginning. Anyway, I got to hanging out at their house and, and this man just started talking to me and spending time with me and, and, and I didn't trust men. And I'm looking at him, okay, this is gonna be, I mean, where's this gonna go? I mean, I, I, I just didn't trust it. He saw something in me that, that I didn't know I had. He obviously saw it. I'd come over to visit Judy and wind up sitting and talking to him. And I'll never forget this. this. This is a major part of this story. We went to Sonic, and I'm sitting in the back seat of their car with her. We're sitting at Sonic, and this car pulls up beside us. I look over, it's Judy's dad. He does this. Pointed right at me, I thought, oh no. Rolls the window down, and he says, no small talk. He said, young man, I don't know what you'll be doing in 30 minutes. My daughter will be in church. He didn't say goodbye. He didn't say nothing. He didn't wave and he backed out of that parking lot. 
And I'm sitting there, she looked at me with them big old brown eyes and said, well, what are you gonna do? I said, I guess I'm going to church. And guys, the rest is almost history. I mean, I went as lost as anybody could be. The next Sunday, I went again. The next Sunday, I went again. And God began to stir me. I didn't know it. I didn't know how to hear his call. I'm sitting in the middle of the pews, people on both sides. The invitation's given. My heart starts pounding. I'm thinking, am I having a heart attack? What is going on here? And I'm like, I ain't walking in front of these people. I'm not going up there. And I resisted. I mean, I just flat said no. Next Sunday, I go back. Same scenario. Third Sunday. Not even thinking about it. I'm just going because her daddy said, you're going to go to church with my daughter, okay? I wind up on the end of the pew that Sunday. Invitations given. God moved, and I almost crawled to that altar. I didn't know how to pray. I just cried because I was a very sinful person on a downward spiral and didn't care. And how could anybody love me, even this God they're talking about? And we left there that Sunday, and this man And guys, he's going on to be with the Lord, so and he went on to be my father-in-law, but I never wanted to use that name in front of his name. He was a father I never had. I tell that because that shield I had put up in front of me, and I told myself, never trust another man. Tom Morgan took that shield down, and I went from not trusting man to having two in my life took me and discipled me and uh, gave me the examples that I needed in life, men to follow, uh, and never took credit for it. Will, you know that. Granddaddy's always. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, and everything. Uh, anyway, I got to see a real, something that was real in their lives, and I wanted it. And I, from that day forward, it changed my life.